Hey, what's going on guys, it's Bagas here, and with the last review being a T-Rex documentary from the 90s, today, we're gonna jump 20 years into the future and review a modern T-Rex documentary, T-Rex, an evolutionary journey, and I expect to see a huge contrast between the two. As the name clearly states, T-Rex, an evolutionary journey, focuses on the evolution of Tyrannosaurus from their early Asian ancestors up until their migration to North America and becoming T-Rex itself. The 15 minute documentary uses the combination of animated segments alongside paleontologists song at the camera. The documentary pretty much takes us through the entire evolutionary history of T-Rex, which I guess should be expected considering the name of the documentary. It starts appropriately with the earliest Tyrannosaur, Guan Long, and they show how weak and vulnerable it was, and it gives a nice contrast to T-Rex itself. The rest of the documentary takes us on this journey of the early Tyrannosaurs traveling across the continent from Eurasia to North America, encountering new giant predators like Seats, them evolving bigger, and, well, pretty much taking the role of the top predator. It also shows the diversification of the Tyrannosaurus family, with species like Nanukasaurus and Changesaurus, depicting how different species of Tyrannosaurus occupy different ecological niches. It also explains how, up until recently, there was a gap in the fossil record during the middle bit of Tyrannosaurus evolution until the discovery of Lyphranax. Throughout it, there's also this kind of mini story of two siblings across generations of Tyrannosaurus taking on the world basically, then having a fallout when they become T-Rex. It's sort of unnecessary and I'm glad it wasn't really focused on, but I think the real purpose of it was to kind of, I guess, show this evolutionary journey in this side narrative to perhaps make it easier to follow, maybe? I don't know. The documentary ends with, again, as is tradition pretty much, the KT event and a message that dinosaurs still exist today in the form of birds. T-Rex and Evolutionary Journey is probably one of the better modern science-driven documentaries out there, in my opinion anyways. The presentation has a clear sense of direction throughout the runtime, when, while it had a few faults here and there, it was still pretty good overall and focus on telling us the main focus, which is the evolutionary history of T-Rex. The film is edited like a modern documentary, which basically means you can call it over-edited, and it is kind of edited like Planet Dinosaur, but I think for this format it was okay, and actually they do utilize the editing gimmicks more effectively than Planet Dinosaur at least, in my opinion. The gimmicks are actually used to explain certain things that might be kind of hard to visualize, and the explanations also go into more detail, so it feels like there's a greater point for the editing gimmicks. It also explains a lot of scientific terms that are usually left out of documentaries like phylogenetic analysis, coevolution, and I'm pretty sure some others as well. Now, I can't talk about this documentary without mentioning the visuals. It looks spectacular. The models are detailed and are high resolution. The designs themselves look great and actually make the feathered look still actually look quite cool. I think it's pretty obvious that this is a visual masterpiece. However, it of course doesn't mean that the documentary is flawless. One weird issue is that the sound volume of the narration seems oddly low compared to the other sounds, so in some of the scenes, it can be really hard to hear what the narrator is actually saying. Another thing is that in some, well actually quite a few of the paleontologist scenes, the audio kind of cuts out before it switches shots, so there's this second or two of the paleontologist's mouths moving, but no audio is coming out. were quite small, they were living in the shadow of dinosaurs like Siach. Yes, makes it kind of weird, and it is one of the few instances of what you can say is sloppy editing. Also, one thing that I really, really do appreciate from it is that it's a documentary that doesn't have an overemphasis on predator-prey relationships. Although, you can technically say it still kind of takes up a large chunk of the documentary, but like, it's not really focused on all that much aside from the necessary mentions and explanations at certain parts. Point is, it's not a documentary focused on creature violence, and hey, I will say, the fight scenes are a lot more reserved than short compared to some other documentaries, which I think shows that the filmmakers didn't want to show them unless they were necessary and served the point. Overall, I think T-Rex and Evolutionary Journey is a pretty good modern science-driven documentary. Probably the thing I like most about it is that it focuses on this little details that usually get left out by documentaries that really, I guess, makes it special for me. And it gives me hope for future documentaries to follow in the footsteps of this one. Alright, um, I guess it's 
once again time to put it on a tier list. Quality wise I give it a 4.5, obviously the most standout thing is that it looks visually spectacular, like every shot, well every shot, every shot of the animated bits feels like it could just be a painting in and of, in and of itself, like it really looks like a visual masterpiece. And I mean hey, the presentation and the use of editing gimmicks are actually also really good, like the editing gimmicks are used a lot, but they're used like they feel like they have a point to the editing gimmicks. And you know, it's not there for the sake of it being there, you know? And it also covers details that, you know, usually get left out of documentaries, which I really appreciate. And I mean hey, that's a focus on creature violence, so that's always a plus for me. And you know, really one of the kind of big drawbacks or one of the more major criticisms is that it has, you know, a few instances of sloppy editing here and there, but I mean, I'll, I'll give it a pass on that one, it's still pretty good overall. And the same wise, I give it a 4.4. It's science focused in a actually quite fun way, like, I don't, know, I don't know what it is about the presentation, but it makes it more fun to kind of follow this journey of it. And hey, I think the editing also kind of helps with it, because you know, it's it's not too over edited, you know? It's, it's, it's edited like a lot, like, I mean, there's a lot of editing gimmicks, but like, it doesn't feel over edited as well. And you know, I think maybe like the side story, the, well, the sort of mini story of the two siblings things, kind of also makes it. I don't know it subconsciously makes it more fun. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. It it's it's. I don't know it triggers a weird part of your brain. I'll I'll say that. And you know, the only downside is that the action scenes aren't really meant uh, to be for like pure entertainment value, which I personally think is a good thing because, well, well, it's it, they're not. I don't know, it's like they serve a purpose, it's tied from just, you know, right entertainment, but like, if you're looking for pure entertainment within the action scenes, then you're probably gonna feel a bit left, you're probably gonna feel a little bit empty, because it doesn't, they don't really, they're really short, like, that's really the best way to say it, they are really short and really brief, and not a, really a lot of heavily choreographed stuff like in some other documentaries, they're just, they're just short fight scenes, honestly. I rewatch your belly wise, I give it a 4.4. It's only 15 minutes, which means that if you want, it's 10 minutes longer than the usual 40 minute uh, documentaries. But, um, you know, I think it's, I think it's, you know, it's still quite short, so if you want to rewatch it, it won't take up all your time. And the only, and the downside is that since it is science focused, it's kind of, there's less reason for you to rewatch it, because once you kind of watch the science once, unless you want to revisit it, for the sake of refreshing your memory of the science, it's not it's not gonna really be a point in watching. But like, I mean, you could watch it because it is actually quite entertaining to watch the uh, science itself. So, if you're in for that, then you know, I mean, hey, you could rewatch it. And as for my opinion, I give it a four point three. Uh, I quite like the little details uh, about it because like it it tends to include a lot of smaller things that. You know, are not included within documentaries, and really, that's I think the points that ha that's the point that has resonated with me the most about this um wa me watching it. So yeah, I, I quite like that, and you know, I think ultimately it gives me hope for future documentaries to follow in you know the good things that this documentary did, because you know this is kind of the point where creative violence was starting to appear in more and more documentaries, and so I'm glad that. This one shifted away from that trend and you know it gives me hope it gives me hope and that gives it a total score of 17.6 given I do I think the same score as Danotasia and just below truth by clear dinosaurs and um, yeah it's in the 8th year hope you enjoyed the video if you did be sure to leave a like and subscribe and you know what I do want to say that I'm actually genuinely curious about your guys' opinion on this documentary because you know it is a relatively recent one which means there's not a lot of really videos on it or you know uh, people discussing their opinions on it so I'm actually quite curious about how you know the community sort of feels about this one so leave your opinions in the comments I'll be very interested to read them and I'm I really am genuinely curious how like other people feel about this one because I quite like it but who knows maybe some of you guys have a different opinion about it I know. I, I am curious though, so if you have an opinion, which you probably do, leave it in the comments. And um, I've been kind of out of it today, I'll be honest. 
it feels kind of weird recording because I'm it's midday. I just finished school, and I was I I I, I kind of wrote this thing on the Sunday because, I, as you probably can infer from the pre from the um tier list video, I was in a hotel, so I didn't have really much time to write the script. I was uh, busy doing other stuff that is not work related. So um. Yeah, but um, we should still be on schedule. If not, it'll come on the day after. Um, it'll come out on Thursday, if not on Wednesday. But um, yeah, I guess I'll just see you in the next video.